So I want to talk about the kind of future of the Republican Party from, from two particular angles. Uh, I want to talk about it from the conservative angle, like wh where the attacks are coming from on the right and where the attacks yeah. are coming from on the left. So let's start with the right. It seems like, at least in 2016, there was this emerging gap between the quote unquote populist conservatism mm -hmm. of President Trump and sort of the classical old school conservatism that you were representing in the 2016 race. And in the end, it seemed as though the populist conservatism was, was ascendant. I never really bought into the mm -hmm. idea that populist conservatism was, was an ideology. It seemed like more of an affect to me. And in terms of policy, President Trump has basically governed like a conservative with the absence of, of any sort of spending cuts. Do you think that there is such a thing as populist conservatism? And how much, how much, I guess, attention should be paid to the prevarications of people who say that the future of the Republican Party lies in things like tariffs and government involvement and subsidies and all that sort of stuff? You know, look, I do think there is such a thing as populism, but 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 I'm going to uh, a little bit fight the hypo and, and reject the characterization. I, you know, I'm very much a Reagan conservative, but I think Reagan was a populist. If you look at free market principles, they are all about working men and women. They are all about opportunity. They're all about folks like my dad when he came from Cuba with nothing, having an opportunity. He washed dishes making 50 cents an hour, but he was in an economic environment where you could climb that economic ladder. And, and so, you know, if you look at 2016, uh, I, we, we talked a little bit earlier about the socioeconomic divide. 2016 Republican field, there were 17 Republicans running. And, and if you were laying odds in DC or New York at the beginning of the campaign, who was gonna be the nominee, who was gonna win the election? nobody would have bet on Donald Trump. And, and actually nobody would have bet on me either. We might've been 16 and 17 in the betting odds. There were a bunch of other candidates that were supposed to be the dominant juggernauts. If you fast forward to the primaries, if you look at almost every state, and if you look at working class voters, working class voters in almost every state, either Trump was one and I was two, or I was one and he was two. And it is almost perfectly correlated. The states where I was one and he was two among working class voters are the 12 states I won. The states where he was one and I was two are the states he won. And none of the other 17 candidates won more than a single state. Kasich won Ohio, Rubio won Minnesota, and Trump and I won the other 48. Now that utterly upended Washington conventional wisdom. But the reason that happened, I believe, is because Washington politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, were not responding to the Ohio steel workers, to the truck drivers, to the waitresses, to the, to the cops and firefighters, to the men and women with calluses on their hands. So when I hear populism, that's what I think about is who are you fighting for? And, and look, big government and socialism, the Democrats fight for the elites, for the special interest. Under Obama, the rich got richer. Big government and big business do great together because big business gets in bed with big government. My view, listen, I'm very skeptical of big business. I'm interested in small businesses. I'm interested in the next generation of creative destruction and entrepreneurs. And so I think breaking the corporatist cronyism of Washington was a very important issue in 2016. And those same working class voters, by the way, that decided the 2016 primary are also the voters who won the general election, who gave Trump the victory over Hillary Clinton. So I think in that regard, now that doesn't mean, as the media pundits wanna say, that you suddenly have a whole dramatically new agenda. If you look at what Trump has actually enacted, and I've worked very closely with the president on this, tax cuts, repealing job killing regulations, securing the border, rebuilding the military, those are conservative values but they respond to the working men and women in this country. 